Ms. Joseph, could you tell us your date of birth, please? Date I was born is 11, 1957. The seven is up front and the seven is in the back. I told you 19, 1975. Okay, you were born in 1975? What city do you live in? For now? Yes, ma'am. Orlando. How long have you lived in the city of Orlando? Maybe 13 years. And where were you born? Haiti. When did you come to the United States? I came in 1992. No. Do you speak English, Miss Joseph? Yes, I speak English. You just feel more comfortable in Creole, is that right? Yes. Do you have any children, Miss Joseph? Yes, I used to have two. Can you tell me their names, starting with the oldest? Francel, Cherry. And the younger one, please? Alex, Cherry. How old is Fonzo now? Francel is 23 years old. And what is Alexandria Cherry's date of birth? October 1st, 1999-97. 1997 or 1999? No, 97. Okay. And Alexandria Cherry is no longer with us, is that right? No. When was the last time you saw your daughter, Alex Cherry, alive? Month of July, July 28. Was that 2014? Yes. Do you know a person named Snell St. Simon? Yes. Do you see him in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you please? Point to him and describe an article of clothing he's wearing. He has a black suit on him. It has a shirt like a cream. He has a tie that is black and gray on him. And may the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant. Record will so reflect. What was your relationship to the defendant, Sunel St. Simon, in July of 2014? He was my husband. Were you legally husband married? Okay, what does it mean, your husband in Creole? Were you legally married? He's a, no, not my husband, but how, how I know it in Creole, what you call boyfriend. Okay. Did you live together with him in July of 2014? Yes. How long had you lived with him at that time? 11 years. Where did you meet him? He could work in Boston Market. Do you remember how many years ago or what year you met him? What I remember when I met him, Alex was five years old. Okay. How long after you met Sunel St. Simon did your relationship become romantic in nature? Around six or seven years. Right. What kind of relationship did you observe him have with your son, Fonzo Cherry? A good relation. What about with Alexandria Cherry? Yeah, it's the same. What did they call him? They called him father. When Sunel St. Simon lived with you and your children, did he help provide for your family? Yes, he helped us. Did he help pay bills? Yes. yes. Did he help raise the children? Yes. yes. Did he have permission, particularly when they were younger, to discipline them? Yes. Has he always have a, had a job to work? Yes. Did he sometimes work two jobs? When I first met him, he had two jobs, but when we got together, he only had one. Was one of those jobs at Boston Market? <laughs> yes. Would you agree that Sunel St. Simon was a hard-working person when he lived with you? That's not what I said. If he worked hard. He worked hard. Okay. I want to talk to you now about the last day you saw Alex alive, Monday, July 28th. Where were you working on that day in 2014? No, I was working at a hotel. What did you do there? I cleaned. And was Snell St. Simon working at the Boston Market? Yes. And on that day, school was out for the summer. Is that correct? It, yes. Do you remember what grade your daughter Alex had completed the previous year? Ten, it was. And do you know where she went to high school? Can you tell us where that was? Olympia. Was your son Fonzo Cherry in school back at that time? 
S-E-S. Where was he going to school on this day? He, he was at college at Valencia. Do you remember where you lived back on July 28th of 2014? Yes. Do you remember the address? Yes. Could you tell us the address, please? The address was 300 Parthon, Parthon Hill. The house number was 2001. Was that off of Good Homes Road? Yes. How long did you live in that place prior to this day that Alex disappeared? Just three months. Who lived in the apartment at that time? The four of us. And that would be yourself, Fonzo, Alex, and the defendant, Sinel St. Simon. Is that right? Yes. How many bedrooms did the apartment have? Three. And how many baths? Two. Yes, sir. Was the apartment the living space of the apartment on the first floor or the second floor? Second floor. Where was the entry to the apartment, the front door? You open the front door like the way the house is made. You go upstairs to find the living room in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit A. Do you recognize the layout of State's Exhibit A in the apartment? Yes. Yes. And does it fairly and accurately represent the layout of your apartment that you lived in on July 28, 2014? Yes. And at this time, the State would ask the court to admit State's A as State's No objection. All right, thank you. It'll be admitted. Going back to that Monday, do you remember what time you woke up? I woke up around 6. What time did you have to be at your job? My job, I needed to go to work at 9 o'clock. So why did you wake up so early that morning? I woke up that early, brushed my teeth so I could go drop Samuel and Simon at his job. Did you always drive him to work? Yes, we did that all the time because we were using that one vehicle. Where was the Boston Market he was working at back then? On Kirkman. What time did he have to be at work? He said that he needed to go to work at 7 o'clock. So you mentioned that you shared a vehicle at that time, is that right? Yes. And can you describe the vehicle? We had a big white truck, Ford. Your Honor, may I approach the witness who has been marked as states being shown to counsel? You may. Yes. Joseph, I'm showing you B, do you recognize the image of States Exhibit B? Yes. What is that a picture of? That's a picture of the vehicle that of the vehicle that I drove. Is it a fair and accurate depiction or picture of your truck as it looked back on the day you drove the defendant to work? Yes, yes that's the one. Ms. Joseph, did that truck have any transmission problems back on the morning of Monday, July 28th? No. Were you aware of any issues or problems that truck had driving back on the morning of Monday, July 28th? No. It was running smoothly, is that right? Yes. Did anything unusual happen that morning before you took the defendant to work at Boston Market? No. Did you see your son, Fonzo Cherry, before you drove the defendant to work that morning? Fonzo has his own vehicle. He's the one who always leaves the house before everybody. So he was gone when you woke up? Yes. Okay. Did anything unusual happen while you were driving the defendant to Boston Market? No. Was it just the two of you on the drive? Yes. Do you remember what time you dropped him off? Around six something, almost seven o'clock. Was he wearing his normal Boston Market uniform that morning? Yes. Where did you go after you dropped him off at work? After I dropped him off to work, me, I went home. What did you do when you got back to your apartment? When I got home, me, I went to take a shower to prepare for me to go to work. At some point before you left for work, did you go to check on your daughter, daughter Alex? No, it was when I returned after dropping off Samuel, then that's when I went to work her up for her to go to work. What happened when you went to wake Alex up before she, you went to work? When I called Alex to uh, get up to go with me, she says, no, she's not going to go with me because she has a headache. She's not going to work. 
So she was supposed to go to work with you that day? Okay. Yes. You may. Did Alex normally go to work with you on Mondays? Sometimes, sometimes. Like when I first started working, that's when I started to show her that. Was there a reason, a specific reason, she was going to work with you on this Monday that you can recall? That day, the reason why she was going to work with me, because I had a plan. I was going to get off work earlier so she can help me. Okay. When had you made the plan for Alex to go with you to work on that Monday? Was it that day or the day before? Every time, like when we're going to work on that Monday, I already <coughs> had a plan with Alex to go to work that day. <coughs> Did you actually see Alex when you poked in and spoke to her that morning? Yes. Did you go in her room? For a reason, I was just talking to her at the door, and I said, Alex, wake up, wake up to go. She lift her head up. She said, Mom, I cannot go. Because I have a headache. I cannot go. Is that the reason you didn't make her go that day? Yes, I called my sister. What did you tell your sister? I said, my sister, don't wake up Donna, because if Alex doesn't see Donna, she could get mad. And is that Dana St. Floor? Yes, Dana St. Fleur. And is Dana St. Fleur your sister's daughter? Yes. And what's your sister's name? Equino. Pola Milfour. So Dana St. Fleur is your niece, is that right? Yes. Was Dana supposed to go to work with her mother and yourself that day? That's, yes, that's what we do. We take both of them to work with us. Did you do anything else? besides get ready and speak to Alex that morning before you left for work? Going back to the same thing, I said, Alex, here's some medication, so when you wake up... When you wake up what? To take it for the headache. Did you drive straight to work that morning, Ms. Joseph, or did you pick someone up on the way? I didn't go straight to work. I went to the apartment to pick up my sister because my sister was working with me at the same place. When you got to work that day, did you ever try to call your daughter, Alex Cherry, from work? Well, yes, I called her many times. When I kept calling and I could not find Alex, when I told my sister I cannot find Alex, called Dana to go check on her, my sister told me, she said, Rosalie, you're keeping too strict of a watch on her. Maybe she's just sleeping. Let her sleep. Did you try to get anyone else to contact Alex while you were at work? Yes, I had called Samuel St. Simon. I kept saying, I'm trying to find Alex and I cannot find her. Were you able to get a hold of Sunel St. Simon during the day? Yes. Are, you, are you aware of anyone who was able to get your daughter Alex Cherry on the phone on Monday, July 28th? Yes. No, the person that I thought could find Alex easily was Dana. Was Dana able, to your knowledge, to be able to contact her? Yes, that's what I believe because Dana is her good friend and everything. Was she actually able to speak to her, to your knowledge? No, Dana said she didn't speak with her. You previously said that you were not able to call Sunel St. Simon on the phone that day. Is that right? I was calling him the whole day, but I could not get him. When I finally find Samuel is when I got off work, and then he called me to say, come and pick him up. Did he call you on the phone that morning? It was not in that morning at that time. It was in the afternoon around 5 o'clock. Do you remember him calling you in the morning around 9.30? Yes, yes, he called me. And what did he ask you when he called you on the phone? He asked me two questions. Can you tell me what the two questions were, please? He said, where is Alex? And what did you tell him? I said, Alex didn't go to work with me today. She's not well. She has a headache. What was the other question? He, looked, he asked me, where was I? I said, at work. Do you remember what Sunel St. Simon's phone number was back in July of 2014? Yes, I remember it. 
Can you tell me what it was? Three, two, one, five, two, seven, thirteen, thirteen. Okay. So you mentioned that he called you that afternoon to pick him up. Is that correct? Yes. What time did you leave work that Monday? I don't remember the time exactly, but it was around five something. Was Paula Milford, your sister, with you? Yes. yes. And where were you going to pick the defendant up from work? Boston Market. Did you actually pick him up from the Boston Market restaurant? No, when I got to Boston Market, I didn't find him. So how did you know where to go or where he was? He called me, he told me he was at Burger King. Did you go to Burger King? Yes. Was he at Burger King? When I got to Burger King, I didn't find him and he called me again. He said he's going into Publix to purchase something. So did you eventually pick him up from Publix? Yes. Do you remember what he was wearing when he got into the vehicle or into your truck at Publix? Yes. What was he wearing? He had a black pants on him. He had one of these big jacket on him like those people who was cooking. His Boston Market uniform, is that what he was wearing? Boston Market, yes. Okay. When the defendant got in the car, did you see any injuries on him? Yes, I saw this mark on the top of his hand and I questioned him. Well, <coughs> had you seen that mark when you dropped him off that morning? No. What did he tell you when you asked him where that injury came from? He told me that he was injured at work while he was opening a box then he was injured. Did you watch Sunil St. Simon walk from the Publix and get in your truck? Yes. Was he limping at all when he did that? No. At any point when he got in the truck with you, did Sunil St. Simon tell you he left work that day? Me, I didn't speak with him because when he got into the car, the vehicle, I was already mad with him because I've been trying to call him. I couldn't get hold of him, so I was upset with him. But he didn't tell you that. Is that right? What was that? That he left work. No. The only thing that I asked was the mark that was I saw on top of his hand. Did he voluntarily tell you about borrowing his uncle's car that day? No. I don't know anything about that. Did he tell you or did you tell him that you had been trying to reach Alex and could not? I didn't say nothing to him because I was already upset with him. He didn't pick up on my phone calls. Did you drive straight to the apartment complex or did you drop anyone off? No. Once he got into the vehicle from the Publix, I let him drive. Were there any stops between Publix and picking him up and when you got back to your apartment complex? As my sister was with me, I went to drop my sister off at a friend's house. And did you go straight from dropping your sister off to your apartment complex? Yes, after I dropped my sister, after she was speaking with an older person that she found, after that I went home. When you got and parked at the apartment complex, did you go straight to your front door? Yes, I got out and I went to the front door and I saw him staying in the vehicle. I said, how come you didn't open the door for me? When you got to the front door, was it open or closed? It was closed. Was it locked? Yes. Did you see any damage on the front door? No. Did you have a key that you could use to open the front door at that time? The reason why I had asked him to open it, he was in the same key from the vehicle. Keys. Okay. Who had keys to the apartment as of that day? It was me, Samuel, and Fonso. Did Sunel St. Simon still have possession of his key on that day? I don't know because he had the key. Was it your key on the ring that he had or did he have his own key? Well, his own key, he had already said the week prior that he had lost it, so I don't know. So he previously told you he lost his key, is that right? Yes, a uh, week Prior, prior to the incident, he said he lost his key. 
So eventually he brings you the key and you go into your apartment. Is that correct? He opened the door for me and I went in and after that he came in behind me. When you go in your house, do you take your shoes off? Yes, the first thing I did was took off my shoes and then I ran into Alex's room. Can you describe what you saw when you got into Alex's room? When I got into Alex's room, it looked like I saw somebody like who had moved and left the house. Were there any sheets on her bed? <coughs> no, I didn't see nothing. Drawers open, everything. Were there any clothes hanging in the closet? No, no, no clothes in the closet. When you'd left that morning, were there sheets on the bed? Oh, yes, there was a big blanket on it. The bed was fixed really well. Did Alex usually make her own bed every day? Yes. When you walked into her room, was your daughter Alex Cherry in the room? When? When I came back from work? Yes, ma'am. No. No. Where was the defendant, Sunel St. Simon, when you walked into the room and saw these things? I screamed out loud and then he came into the room and looked at me and then he looked and left. Did he say anything to you when he came in the room? I was already in there. My head was, and then when he got down from the stairs, and then I didn't hear what he said. When you say he left, did he leave the apartment or just leave Alex's room? He left the apartment. I went to look in the window in the house. I didn't see the truck in the parking. Did you see any broken windows or... Anything else disturbed in your apartment except for Alex's room? I was not really checking for all these things. It was like days after I find this small little carpet. Okay. Yeah, may I approach the witness what's been marked as State's Exhibit C and previously shown to counsel? You may. It's composite C. It's two photographs. Could you look at each one and let me know if you recognize what's depicted? Was Alex dead? Is that the way it looked when you entered into her room on July 28th of 2014 when you got home from work? Yes, but the only thing that was not on there was this white thing. Okay. And that says the, the first photo. What about the second photo? It was like that. Okay. So do both photographs fair and accurately depict her room that you saw on the evening of Monday, July 28th? except for that white object on her bed? Yes. Do you know what that white object is? It's yes, it's uh, underwear. And where did you, was that underwear on the bed when you first walked in when you got home from work? No. Okay. I'll come back to you. So you said that Snell St. Simon left the apartment after he observed Alex's room, is that right? Yes. Did you try to find out where he went? Yes. Did you call him? Yes. And were you able to speak with him on his phone? Yes. Did he tell you where he was? Yes. Where did he say he was? I said, you came here and you noticed that I didn't see Alex and you left me by myself here? And he didn't go say, oh, I'm not far I'm behind Sam. He said, I'm not far. I'm in front of Sam. I'll be back. Is that Sam's Club? Is that a store near your apartment? Yes, close by, not too far. Did you tell him to come back? I said, yes, you need to come back to uh, help me, to help me find where Alex is. When he came back, where did you decide to go? I said, drive me to my sister's so I could find Donna, so I could make a few phone calls. And did he drive you to Dana's house? Yes, he did all that for me. Why did you want to go see Dana St. Floor? in my head, if Alex had something to do, maybe Dan, Dana knows. When you got to Dana's house, did you speak to Dana? I said, Dana, Dana, I just came to pick you up. We need to make a few phone calls to find out where Dana is. Alex is, interpreter's correction. Did Dana, did you learn that your daughter Alex had had a boyfriend named Damien Thomas. Damien Thomas. Damien Thomas, yes. Did Dana call Damien Thomas? Yes, I told Dana to come, call him to come and help me find, to, to help us find him, her. So after Dana 
made these calls, did you go from her apartment back to yours? Dana's apartment, I didn't go back. We stayed there. No, I didn't At mine. Okay. So you picked up Dana and went back to your apartment. Is that right? Yes. Had you called the police at this point? After we made a few phone calls calling New York and then all the Alexandra friends said they don't know where Alexandra is, then what Dana and I did was call the police. Did you call the police from your apartment once you got back there? <coughs> when you got back to your apartment with Dana, what did you do? What did I do after returning with Dana? I went to the neighborhood to knock on doors, but I always, I had left uh, Sunel St. Simon in the house while Dana and I were um, trying to handle all these things. One moment, okay, Mrs. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Joseph, did you ever make any attempts to ensure that Alex would not be home alone with the defendant? No, because I didn't have any reasons. Okay. Why would you take her to work during the week? The reason why I take her to work during the week, I was teaching her an experience how life would be when you don't stay in school. I heard of a place called Mr. Money. Of business, Mr. Money. Mr. Money is the place that lend people money. Have you ever personally been there to use their services? I one time. You went. Did you go with the defendants of St. Simon? Yes. Do you know if he regularly used the services of Mr. Money? I know he would do something, but I don't know how many times. Do you remember where that business was located? Or the road you would take to get to it. That's what I remember. I don't remember the address well in my head. Who did laundry in your house? I do. Do you recall being present in your house when you're apart on Tuesday when members of law enforcement took a pair of pants out of the washing machine? I was there, but many things was happening. I was there. They say that. Don't say what they said. So you were called the black the pants. Is that correct? Yes. I'd like you to look down to your right and state's exhibits. A J is sitting to your right. Do you recognize that? Yes. And know whose pants those are? Yes. Whose pants are those in state's exhibit A J? It is the past of Samuel and Simon. Do you recall taking your daughter Alexandria Jerry, to the dentist before she disappeared? Yes. yes. Do you remember how long before she disappeared it was that you took her? Yes, well, I don't remember because we started doing check up for school that's going to open. <clears throat> Can you tell us where the dentist was that you took Alexandria Cherry to? down on power behind the big McDonald there was a display. now you've been testifying for a long time so I want to clarify a few things you drove the defendant to work on Monday July 28th is that right yes and he never mentioned the tr transmission problem with the truck correct no and then you went home and checked on Alex is that right that morning yes after I got off work I went home no that morning after you dropped Snell St. Simon off at work, you went home and got ready for work and looked on looked in on Alex. Is that right? Yes. And that was the last time you saw her, is that correct? Yes. And you tried calling her during that day, is that right? Yes. And then later that day, you and your sister, Paula Milford, picked the defendant up at Publix, is that correct? Yes. Now, earlier you told us that Snell St. Simon called you in the morning and asked you two questions. Do you remember that? Yes. Specifically, he asked if Alex was home or where she was. Yes. Before that Monday, had you told Sinel St. Simon that Alex was going to work with you on Monday? 
Yes, he knew. When did you tell him? We have no seal. He knows everything that's going on in the home. I don't have any other questions this time, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross examine. Good afternoon. So, you said that you met Mr. St. Simon what year? I don't remember what year, what I remember when I met him, Alex was five years old. So, 11 years ago from 2014, is that correct? Yes. So, does 2003 sound correct? Well, it and that's what it is. It must be it. And at that time, Mr. Simon was working at Boston Market? Yes. And he was also a cook at TGI Friday. Is that right? Yes. You asked him to quit one of his jobs so he could spend more time with you? No, I was not the one who asked him. At that time, he was bringing home a paycheck to you for the household, correct? He didn't bring me the, the check or bring the check to me. He would give me a portion to pay for the, the home. And he was a good provider in that way? Yes, yeah, if he. Once he, and once he have a female. Do you mean yourself? Yes, he was with me. He has to help me with the house. Yes, ma'am. And he was also sending money home to Katie, is that right? And that's what he said. I don't know. And to his children? I know he had a child in Haiti. Providing for the financially also, right? Election relevance. Overrule cross, I'll give her a little away. And he's providing for his children in Haiti, right? Yes, that's what he told me. Okay. And at the time that you and Mr. St. Simon um, developed a romantic relationship, you didn't have a car, is that right? When you originally started dating, you, you didn't have a car, right? I didn't have a car. And Mr. St. Simon bought a car for you, right? The car was not to be purchased for me directly. He purchased a vehicle for us to drive together. And you mentioned your sister, Paula Milford. In what condition? And at, at some point, Mr. St. Simon also assisted her in getting an apartment, right? Yes. Because she had lost her job and needed someone to go sign the lease? Objection, again, relevance. Overall. He didn't help her get an apartment? He had an apartment, not that she lost her job. Oh. Because her income was not sufficient. I see. So he helped her in that way. He did not sign. He signed. Yes, ma'am. Help sign for the house. Yes, ma'am. He's not the one who pays for it. Okay. And you said that he was like a father to Fonzo and Alex? Yes. That he provided for them financially? Yes. And took care of them both? Both of us was working in the house. Everything was together. together. In fact, yours and his, it was both of yours together, right? Okay. Yes. Every year I allowed him to fill taxes with Alex. And he would take them to the park? Yes, when they were younger. And play with them? Yes. And he would drive them to and from places? Yes. Like their friend's house or the mall? Yes, mainly for Alex. And Fonzo wasn't someone to ask things for himself very often, right? If I'm, no, Fonzo was not like the person that would ask easily. If you want to give him, you can give him. But he's pretty independent. In fact, the only thing that Fonzo asked for um, was a skateboard, and he got it, right? Yes. Um, and then Mr. St. Simon had also purchased for him the phone, right? Yes. I believe it was an iPhone. Yes. Ms. Joseph, do you recall giving a deposition in 2015? A deposition of what? So at that time... It was in an office 
with um, Mr. Williams and members of the defense team. Okay. What is it? What deposition? Okay. I'm sorry. Do you, a deposition is a um, a meeting where you were asked questions and you responded to those questions and it was recorded and you were placed under oath. Yes, but what question? <laughs> Specifically, um, you were asked what was the second job apart from Boston Market and at that time you were discussing TGI Friday and it was I had to Boston Market and it was there that you went on objection improper impeachment Roach I'm sorry it took me some time to find it okay, no problem originally I had asked you if you had made Mr. St. Simon quit one of his jobs when he was working at both Boston Market and TGI Friday I was not the one who asked him to leave he had left one and my follow-up question is, do you recall giving a deposition on June the 26th of 2015? When they had asked me those questions, they had asked me how many jobs when I met him he had. I said two jobs. And do you recall being placed under oath at that time? Yes, for what? To tell the truth during your deposition. Yes. May I approach the witness? May. Madam Chair, would you read for... Ms. Joseph, at least 10 through 12, but whatever she asks. I see it. He said, did you? I see that it, they asked if he did two jobs. Is it 10 to 15? Yes, ma'am, that would be fine. Okay. I already see it. Let, let her read it to you, ma'am, please. Yeah. Sometimes they ask the questions like upside down. And didn't you say you told him to quit one of the jobs? What? He wanted to hear that it was I who asked him to quit. Okay. That's what you want to hear? That's what the lady says she wants to hear. Now, at the on Monday, July 28th of 2014, you testified on direct that at some point you went to get your niece, Dana St. Floor, right? Yes, I went to get Dana St. Floor. And, and you were specifically getting Dana so that she could assist you in calling the police, correct? Yes. Because... <laughs> you were going to rely on her English, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was part of it. Yes, ma'am. And you told Mr. St. Simon that you needed to go and get Dana so that she could assist you in calling the police, right? He, to make phone calls, telephone calls every day. And he drove you all there to get Dana, right? Yes. Okay. Now, when you met with Dana that evening, that was the first time that you knew that Alex had Damian Thomas as a boyfriend, correct? I have heard of the name, but I've never really knew him. I had heard that. But you didn't know that he and Alex were dating until that night, correct? Yes, that night. And you didn't know that they had an intimate relationship until that night, correct? Objection calls for hearsay. Overruled. She can answer if she can. The question was, until the, that night, you didn't know that Damien and Alex had a physically intimate relationship, correct? Yes. You testified on direct that Mr. St. Simon left the apartment before you went to get Dana, right? That he had gone to somewhere around the Sam's Club, is that right? When I had asked him, he said that's where he was. And he had thought you had already called the police, isn't that right? Yeah, but I 
I didn't call the police. I had him go pick up Dana with me. Right. But at the time that he came back to the apartment, he thought that you had already called the police, right? That's him. I don't know. When you were on the phone with him, didn't he say, haven't you called the police yet? He had asked me. I said, no. I said, I need to go um, call Dana. I need to check with Dana. And so then Mr. St. Simon came right back to the apartment, right? Yes. Okay. Now, you said that when you arrived back to the apartment with Dana, you started to notice spots of blood in the bathrooms. Is that right? That's not how I find the spots of blood. Oh. That's not how I said it. When I, when I was with Dana, when we came, we went to the neighborhood. That's how I said it. Yes, ma'am. And when you returned home from the neighborhood, is that when you saw the spots of blood? When I came back from the neighborhood with Dana, that's when I started noticing all these things. Okay. And Mr. St. Simon was in the bathroom, right? Yes, he was in the bathroom. And you were in the bathroom when you, with him when you noticed some spots of blood on the bathroom uh, counter? He took the things in the middle. He took them in the middle. I'm sorry, I'm, I wasn't going to go through your entire direct. I'm not meaning to take anything out of order. But you testified that Mr. St. Simon had been wiping the blood inside of the bathroom. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, at some point, you said for him to go, that was in the master bathroom, is that correct? The first time? Yes. And you told Mr. St. Simon to go into the other bathroom within the apartment, right? You told him, go to the living room, go, go. And Mr. St. Simon did as you told him, right? Wanted to do. And he went and sat on the couch as you told him, right? Did he tell you Yes. Okay. Now, whenever you told him to leave the bathroom, he didn't argue with you, right? No. No. He wasn't one to argue often or at all, right? He doesn't argue like that. He's pretty passive. He's yes, he is a person like that. You said after you had spoken with the neighbors, you returned to the apartment, right? And at some point, you found underwear under the bed, right? Yes. And on direct, you said that Mr. St. Simon tried to take it from you and said, give it to me, right? Yes. And at that time, he specifically said someone put that there to frame him, right? Yes. You were the one that was primarily responsible for the laundry for the family, right? Yes. Prior to that day, you had to use a laundromat, right? Or prior to the day before. Let me rephrase that. The day before, Mr. St. Simon had bought a new washer and dryer for the apartment, correct? I don't know anything about that. I rented the apartment with everything. Okay.
you said that there were three keys to the apartment, right? There was one on your keychain with the car key, right? Yes. And Fonzo had one, right? But Mr. St. Simon had lost his house key a week before you testified, right? That's what he told me. I don't know. He told me he lost his key. And so when you were asking him to open the door, you met with the house key that was on your keychain in the truck, correct? Yes. Not with his own personal key. Me, I was not thinking about all that. I just knew he had the key, so I asked him to open the door for me. I understand, and I just wanted to clarify, the key he had was your key, right? Yes. Okay. May I have a moment? You may. Thank you. Um, also missing from her room was luggage, correct? There were suitcases or bags in Alex's room, right? I don't know anything about the suitcase. Bags, duffel bags, she owned those things, right? What type of bag? Bags that you would carry clothes in. And you said that Sunel bought her an iPad, is that right? Yes. Also missing from her room was that iPad, right? In Alex's room, there was nothing in her room, no clothes, no nothing. Everything was gone. Okay, including her iPad, right? Yeah, only the TV was there with the dressing. <coughs> Dresser. The first officer that you testified that came to the house, is named Deputy Barry. Do you recall telling Deputy Barry that... Objection. Proper impeachment. Sorry? Improper impeachment. Do you recall? from a statement. I, I don't know what she's... She's not impeaching right now. She's asking a question overruled. But she's reading a statement and a report to the witness. Make it a, make it a question, please. I, I will. Thank you. Do you recall telling Deputy Barry that luggage was missing from Alex's room. Yes. Me, I didn't tell the officer about any uh, luggages because I was not the only person in the room at the time. Samuel was also. About the luggages, I don't know anything about. Okay. I have nothing further at Thank this you. time. Thank you. Redirect. <coughs> Ms. Joseph, do you recall okay, being asked? Just a minute. You need to change? No, I, we just checked and That was a balk. You started to move, so I'm sorry. I apologize, Mr. Williams. Do you recall being asked by the defense attorney about Sunel St. Simon contributing to the bills in the house? Contributing? Help me to pay bills? Yes, ma'am. You remember being asked that? Yes, he helped me. Right. So. There came a time after Alex's disappearance where he was no longer with your family, correct? Who? Sunel St. Simon was no longer with your family after Alex disappeared. Yes, he was not with the family. Right. How long did you stay in the apartment where all this happened after Alex disappeared? I couldn't stay in the home. I had to leave the home. Did you have money for a new apartment without the defendant present to help with bills? Yes, I was working, and Alex's father used to send me money each month. Okay, so where did you go? Or did you ever go and stay on a, on a relative's or live with a relative after you moved out of the apartment? Judge objection, relevance beyond the truth. The door was opened on cross. I'll allow it. I'll restate the question. After you left the apartment where this all occurred, did you have to go and live with a relative for a time? Yes, I had to go live with my sister Paula because too much was on me, so I need to go somewhere where I could be at ease. And after Alex disappeared and the defendant was around, was not around, 
you had less money, right? Yes, that's how it happened. When two doing it together and one is doing it, it's not the same thing. Right, so it got financially harder for you, correct? It was not really difficult for me, like a house bill, because where I was staying at my sister's, one of my paychecks could pay for it. Okay. So you had to move in with your sister? Yeah. Right. Do you remember telling defense counsel that Snell St. Simon said someone put his underwear there to frame me? Yes. Did you ever see anyone other than the defendant go into the apartment while you were with the neighbors? You also were asked about Sunel St. Simon losing his key a week before. Do you remember that question? Yes. And he had to use the key on your key ring to open the door, right? It, that's what he told me. So if he wanted to get in the apartment, someone had to let him in, right? Well, this question I don't know. That's what he told me. He lost his key, so I okay. don't know. Did you ever talk to Alex about not opening the door for strangers? Objection. We're going to allow it. Did you hear the question? Yes, I told Alex not to open the door for people, but if Alex knew this is one of her people, she would open it. No further questions. Is she excused at this point? She is excused and released by the stage. Okay. Well, to recall. Okay, so you want to remain under subpoena at this point? Yes. 